Okay, so today we're going to be opening a NHL Hockey 1990-1991 um, high number series. This isn't like a pack opening. These are the cards that are just like guaranteed, sort of. Yeah, so they go... Cards 401, I think, to 550. Yep. That's what it seems like. Yes. So I'm Dad. I'm Chase. Yeah. Dad and Son Trading Cards. That's right, Dad and Son Trading Cards. So, um... We started doing this the first time. Yep. Just for fun, we opened up. What did we open up? Uh, wasn't it like a um, chrome? That's right. It was the chrome. soccer that we spent a fortune on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but that was all part of a super fun day at a card shop, and um, and now we're slowly adding more openings. Mm -hmm. Right. These are our cards. We're not doing um, breaks and stuff for other people. Yep. It's just stuff for us to, to collect and, and have fun doing together, really. Mm -hmm. You having fun? Yeah, I am. Yeah. yeah, so. And, and uh, because of this, mm -hmm. we have gone From almost worldwide at this yes, point with, yes. with our site. We have got our uh, channel. amazing seven subscribers. Seven, seven people are going to get a notification, and if they elected notifications. If, if they did. Yep. Which, oh, I, hope they, I hope they hit that bell. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, they're going to go ahead and watch a very exciting NHL hockey 1990-91 high series upper deck hockey cards being opened. Yes. Um, I thought what we do today, Chaser, and yeah. I've, I've kind of put you in charge of this, but because this isn't um, an unknown quantity, you know what the cards are that are coming. I have prices and cards over here. Yeah. So Chase is going to make sure we know which cards we want to really look for. Because what we're shooting for today is what? Um... PSA 10s, because we know what's in the box, just we need the 10s. Yeah, yeah, so we're looking for centering, we're looking for edges, we're looking for surface, we're looking for corners, right? Um, and then we need to know the values. I find it mm -hmm. funny when I look in that list, and I'm no hockey expert, uh, that some of the guys who have not been graded yet, um, that had maybe a first year or second year card, but um, I'll have to take a deeper dive. But what we may do on this video is for the ones that we find have value, like we've done on the hoops one. I think we might try to get the price up there. Put the price on the screen. I have to well, be honest. we might just say the price because I have them right here. Right, that's true. So maybe we don't have to do those, those graphics because I I do not know what I'm doing. It, it took him like hours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but Chase is, Chase is taking over all the all the IT and he's doing all this. the all the work. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of all that hard work that we're putting in for all of our amazing fans, followers yes. and fans. Well, it's their fans. fans right? hopefully. Yeah. Um, if you could... Um, uh, hit the like button, maybe? The like button. It might and, turn blue. Okay. If it, if it likes you enough, it might turn blue. Nice. So it changes colors. And then um, and then subscribe, right? Yeah. So if this is your first time listening to us, ramble on. <laughs> yeah. Um, please uh, subscribe. Chase mm -hmm. is trying to get to 1 billion subscribers. Uh, no. Eight. I I'm, I'm hoping for 10. 10? Hoping for 10. Okay. So he's a realist. He's going to go for 10. 10. Yeah. My overall goal is to reach 1,000 by two years from now, maybe. What happens when you make a billion dollars off of your YouTube videos from just opening cards? What will you do? Um, buy more cards so I can open more cards for you guys. Perfect. That sounds great. <laughs> yeah. All right. So with that, we're going to start to open... And if you can hear, our washer's running in the background. So I hope that's exciting for you. But it's laundry day here at the household. And, and uh, laundry's got to be done. And videos have to be made. And there is no uh, there is no compromise. Right? Did so you cut the box? I did cut the box. You cut the box. I'm a box, box cutter. Well, I mean, he literally has a box oh, cutter. Oh, there's a box so cutter. I mean. That's what I meant. <laughs> All right. So let's open this up. I've actually had this this box. I don't know, a, oh. a year? Oh my. I mean, I have a, a bunch of stuff like this, but um, I uh, I think I paid $8 for this all in. Oh my. Including shipping. That is so, um, pretty slick. Yeah, these, these look good so far. And uh, all nice all right. corners, I see. I mean, yeah. really nice so Let's corners. get these out of here. Look at all right, the box is open. And what was the, uh, these guys were on the bottom, right? Yeah, that was on the bottom. Yeah, because that's 401. So we're, I think really? we're going to start. Oh, sorry. That's right. right. I'm kicking you out of here, <laughs> aren't I? 
Almost. We don't really have the camera mastered as far as how to set things and how not to hit the camera all the time. It's, because it's like right in front of you and it's hard to read the cards. If anybody has any tips on that. Yeah, yeah, there, I'm it. sure there's some way to do that. Probably is. Wow, so, you know, I think I've opened this before and I don't remember all those hero cards. We'll look at those afterwards. Those are really cool. Mm -hmm. And Chaser, we're gonna start at um, five. Five, we're starting at five what? Well, here, I'll go upside down. That way we are kind of following the way it should go. Nope. I have no great way to do this. Okay. Because the ones we want, I'll, I'll just do it this way. We'll see how this looks for the camera. Okay. So we're going down to which guy? If we start at what the beginning, 401. 401, okay. Let me see where I've got to put my hand. All right, there you go. So there's that first card. Tatrinov. All right. Great. And we're going down to Eric Desardins. Not graded. 401 is not on my sheet, which means nobody has sent him in. Yeah. What we're really looking for is number 428 is going to be our next hopefully good guy. Bobby you know, Smith. in the 90s when fantasy sports were done by hand and then eventually by services, the first job I had out of college was working for a company called Stata Magic and I was kind of the operations guy and the operations guy consisted of uh, there were two owners and then me and one other guy ran a copier and we did all the fantasy sports Didn't you guys like make bunk beds there? Well, so we slept on the work? floor. Yeah, yeah. Um, And uh, we did fantasy baseball basketball and hockey and uh, So I had to learn all the hockey players back then um, And we were the largest uh, fantasy all... fantasy sports company in the world working out of the basement of a law firm and uh, so and if anybody used Stata Magic back in the day, that was us. We would hire 30 or 4 people to set up the leagues, and then it was just us that, that ran the leagues um, off a Excel macro. So it wasn't even any fancy program. No, yeah. Printed them out, took a, a five-pound weight to crush the, the envelopes so we could fit, the, um, fit, fit the, the paper into the envelope to get it to be sent off through the mail. And then uh, we sent most of our reports that way, and slowly we converged over to... Uh, sending um, PDFs, but they weren't PDFs, they were called, I forget the name of the company. And we had, you know, to, our IT department was basically me, people calling, trying to use AOL to get hooked up, and literally me saying things like, okay, now plug in your computer. Oh, no. So they didn't even have their computer, like, plugged in? To... Oh, this is, oh, no. This is a while back. Oh, no. All right, right, they got to remember where I'm supposed to be here. Yeah, All yeah. right, so we're coming up um, uh, soon 428 here. 428 is our next. 428. So if any of these guys look familiar and are excited to see these cards, I mean, these Comment are... Comment down below, maybe. Yeah, please. Tell us if anything is good that we don't know about on our sheet. The cards are actually... These are in great... They so are. So it's Chris Chelios, right? Chris Chelios hasn't been graded. This is not a rookie, but, uh, you know, great player. Okay, cool. First sleep. Joe Mullen, maybe, too. I just don't know. Uh, I don't see what number would he be. I don't There's see No one submitted anything no, in grading. Submitted any Joe Mullen. At least through PSA. Um, wait, do we... Nope. Uh, it's not the next card, but the card after next card. All Ooh. right. All okay. right. So the back looks good. There's looks a little bit good. of hanging chads there. Oh, no. Hang We're on. OC, left to right. Um, Off-center, off yeah. Okay. From the Montreal Canadiens. It's a bummer. Um, yeah. So this is this is a, a probably a nine at best, but if I look at those corners and just the the, the cut of the car doesn't look great. That so would go for um, eighty seven dollars if it was the recent price that it was sold for was eighty seven dollars. There are sixteen tens in circulation from PSA, and the average price is forty eight dollars and twenty five cents. There you go. From the man himself. All right, who are we looking for next, Chaser? Um, it's 487. 487. Let's skip down to who's... Wait, really? Well, those are I those I... are only a couple pop, and they're, they're going for $8. Up. Wait. Oh, okay. Uh, no. No, never mind. I messed up accidentally. Our next one is 451. 
or 458 looks like. It was 451 sold for $12 at PSA 10. Yeah. How much does it cost to grade a card? Do you know? By any um, chance? 20 bucks. 20 bucks. At this current time. Would you send in that card? Uh, yeah! No. There are three of those. Three for um, the World Junior Champion. So, if you, I mean, you might look into that deeper and find out that um, those, um, yeah. those cards, there hasn't been a sale in three years, right? And mm -hmm. maybe that does have some value. So, it's not that just that straightforward. The recent, it, it doesn't have an average price, sadly. Which would help. Washer turned off and now all of a sudden it got really quiet. Yeah, well that's actually really nice. Yes. And we've had some, some clean clothes, right? Yep. I have to be honest, I haven't been looking at the names of all these players. I've just been flipping through looking <laughs> for the... So we can just get to... That's the bummer about these. You don't get... You, you don't really have to pay attention as much. Because you know what cards are good already. So. Yeah, th this is not an exciting uh, rip, right? I mean, it's opening a box. What number am I looking for, Chaser? Uh, 451. And then after that, it will be 458. Claude Lemieux. Absolutely no idea, but he sounds like he belongs in the clouds. Well, he? on Com C, that card is going for more money, and I'll have to find out why. I'm gonna get my eight dollars back. Yes. I so four fifty one. This is the one that uh, folks had graded. Twelve dollars. So that's got all the. This is world champions. Mm -hmm. Up yep. On the on the back, it looks really, really nice and square. Really, a little bit of fraying on the side. Mm. It's upside down. Yeah, but we're just looking at corners. Yep. Four dollars. Or twelve dollars fifty cents. Yeah, these cards really have some fraying. Bummer. That's why you never buy a, never ever buy a um, what's in here? A case. Well, there's some some case. people who say they can they can get those uh, they can clean those up pretty good. So. I know, but I mean, if you buy a case, you could get all terrible cards. Who are we going for now? We're going for four fifty eight. Felix Felix, Pop Felix Popkin. Pop Popkin. He, he belongs in a potluck. <laughs> mm -hmm. Four fifty-eight. So it's the next guy. There it is. Do we have a potential ten? Let's hope. Well, sorry. Let me so make this better for you guys. His recent price is thirty-seven dollars. His average price is seven dollars, uh, seventy-one dollars and seventy-one cents. That's a little weird. Um, hmm. His average is seventy-one, seventy-one, um, and there are twenty-seven tens in circulation from PSA currently. So this is what we definitely want to look at underneath, yes. underneath a microscope and see. We're our... not a microscope. Yeah, <laughs> we're not. We're not going that deep. Well, sure, why not? Under our uh, magnifying glass. But I believe he might want to go in a little Hall of Fame because we have... It's very empty right now. Yeah, let's put him up there. We have somebody. I believe he would like to join. Yeah, perfect. So our next hit, it's actually very recent. It's 461. So it's one ahead. We just did 458. Next one's 461. 461. Okay, so his recent price is going for $46.99. His average price is $49.66. And he has 84 tens in circulation currently. All right, so this guy's been graded a bit. The, uh, I, you see that edge? See how the edge just isn't, isn't perfect? Yeah, it's a bummer. That edge is a lot better. But the centering looks really pretty good. Mm-hmm. So we'll we'll look at that one. I don't you know I don't know what the nines are going for, but um, I'm just trying to if they're above like ten yeah. or so bucks yeah. in the average. Not a big dollar card, but I mean, you know we spent eight bucks on this thing, so big deal. Or he spent eight bucks. I did a long time ago. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So what are we going to shoot for now? Um. Next is four sixty three. So it's but no wait never mind. Next one is. 
If I move. 466, but that isn't. How about 476? That's our back next real. You ever heard of that guy? That name? Wazin Grinsky? What, how, how do you say Zanz it? Zan Grinsky? Take, a, take another look. Wayne? Wayne. Gr Grinsky? Gretzky. Gretzky. No, nope, absolutely no idea. Well, there you go, folks. Or when you're age 11, you've never heard the name Wayne Gretzky. So it sounds like he's like... Maybe we should find out who he is. He, I don't um, know why, but he sounds like he should belong at Thanksgiving on the plate. It sounds like a food. Sounds Wayne, like a, Wayne Gritsky. Grits, uh, grits, Gritsky. Gritsky? Gritsky? Like grits? Yeah, it sounds like a food. Well, sorry to any R Wayne Gr Grinsky fans out there, but... I think everybody's a Wayne Gretzky fan. Well, unless you're 11. Well, maybe there are some people who don't like Wayne Gretzky. He uh, he's the greatest hockey player to ever play. Okay. Uh, he's on he's right one now? of the probably top 10 athletes in all sports combined of all time. Okay, so he's pretty good, apparently. Yes, he's a big deal. 473. 473 is uh, Canada's captains. It's recent price is $25, and there are nine in circulation. So nine, nine PSA 10s. Nine PSA 10s. It says Chris Draper, Stephen Rice, and Eric Lindros. Mm -hmm. So this is um, definitely one to sleeve. And I would imagine that um, there just haven't been a lot of sales of that, which is why it's so low. And the next one is actually also one. It's sold for $10, and there are currently five tens in circulation. And that is... It's... Um, oh, it's because it's Brett, Brett Hall. Hall. Yeah. yeah. All right, so that's... it's. You know, I would say that it, that Was might a movie? fall in the 55-45, mm. but... Probably not. It's probably just off. Or and that the, is, you'd sleep them, but I really do need to make a video on that scanner on how to on how to use a scanner. Yeah, yeah it's um, just like a, it's definitely helpful. It takes that guessing game out, and mm -hmm. I mean, if when they're really close, then it's really can be where you click on the screen. But um, next one is four seventy six. So boom. Wayne Gretzky. Wayne. Wayne Gretzky. He has a, uh, his recent price is $46.30. His average price is $39.31. And there are five tens in circulation currently. All right. That is and not a And the next one is Steve Yerman, which is... Yeiserman. Yeiserman. He has, uh, his recent price is $15.12. He has no average price. And um, there are two PSA tens, apparently. Two Steve Eisermans. That, I, that, are, did, that did not look centered to me either. No. It's too left. Left and up, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Our next one is... Uh, our next one is 487. Is our next hit. Although that's not a big hit. It's just a $5 hit. Um... She'll be oh, all right. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> a oh, that's Jeremy Rennick. Okay. Some of these I'm just going to have you. Yeah, you're just making, even though I don't see them on the board. That's all right. They, they're, they're worth keeping. Are we at 480 something? We're at 46. 486? Okay. Uh, 487 is going to be good, apparently. Mark Ricky, Recky, Recky, yeah, Ricky. The, he is a, average, a recent price of five dollars, and is, yeah. he is two tens. Just leave him up. Which is his next next one is um, 489 Ray Bork. Bork. He only sells for one dollar fifty cents, and then there is one PSA ten. Someone got a Ray Bork for a dollar fifty. Is that good? Well. I, I'm not sure that a, a PSA 10... A PSA 10 Ray Bork. Even, even you know, two years ago, mm -hmm. you couldn't get it graded for $1.50, right? I mean, you basically got a discount on that card no matter what. Our next one is four ninety three, but that isn't one. There's just one graded. There's no money thing. Okay, next one, four ninety six is our next what it seems like. Mark Messier. 
Mark Messi? Uh, he's not. He's not not the not the soccer player. It's Messi A. Messi A. Eh? Mm. I wonder what it's like at Thanksgiving with him. Patrick Waugh? Is that the next one? Um, Patrick Roy. Yeah. So it's okay. yeah. It's um. He sells for eight dollars fifty, and there's one PSA ten. All right. But I feel like I feel like um. Al McInnes. Mark Messier would be really fun to have dinner with. Or Are you saying because he is? Yep, he's really messy apparently. <laughs> especially Thanksgiving. I mean, I feel bad for that turkey. So you know, obviously, we're, right now we're we're rooting through all these All Star cards, and so of course there's so many players that are. Ooh. Legends. Okay. So next one's up is five sixteen. It's a Rob Ray, but I feel like that's a fluke, because do, would Rob Ray go for two hundred and fifty five dollars? Is my question. Uh, that's an excellent question. <laughs> I do not know. So the our next card. I'm is at five sixteen now. Is that five sixteen? Yep. yep. And that is it's Rob the Rob Ray. Ray. There's one ten in circulation, and he sells for two hundred and fifty five dollars. I'm gonna guess Rob bought his own card. That's my yes. Out of way, Rob. I'm so yeah. Don't you think? Maybe that that would make sense. And of That's course, it. I dropped the two hundred fifty-five dollar card. Well, but I, did I hand that to you to? Um... Yeah, you did. All right. Next one is five twenty-one. There are three in circulation. Its average price is thirty-one dollars, and its recent price is thirty-one dollars. Let me guess. That's these two guys right here. Uh, yes, it is. And that is. Young Guns, Fedorov and G Garpenlov, or I would say his name, but, the, but that is really because of Fedorov, Sergei Fedorov. We'll put that one okay, up on the thing. next one is actually Sergei Fedorov is our next hit. It's 525, whenever you get around to there. He sells for, um, his recent price is $102.50. All right, this is our first legit card, right? This is the one where we really would like a 10. Mm -hmm. And I'll try not to hit the camera. Okay, and his average price is ninety dollars ninety two cents, and there are two hundred and twenty four graded. So there are two hundred twenty four tens, and unfortunately, this is not one of them. Well, but that's not that big of a bummer because the next one, Pavel Bure, sells for his recent price is one hundred and twenty dollars thirty eight cents. His average price is one hundred fifty seven dollars. And lots found he has 355 tens. So here's the question. Is it worth $8, and maybe they're another $20 or $30, to buy these boxes mm -hmm. and try to get, let's say it's $25 on average. How many boxes yes. could you buy to possibly get a 10 in either one of these cards? Because they're each 100 bucks. One's 102 one's 120 on the, on the average price. I mean, uh, at, least, at least 10. You know you're always going to get them in here, right? Mm -hmm. You can buy at least 10, probably 11, 12, 13-ish? Yeah, I, you know, I would always be worried about getting them from the same case because yep. um, if, they, if they come from the same sheets or the same cut and they all seem to be off, that seems to be a problem. But um, So there you go. Ser Sergey Fedorov, this is not a 10. Um, it is Sad. a fast, the bottom right-hand corner seems to be turned. No, it's not... Mm -hmm. Uh, you can kind of see that. So, um, sleeve them up and put them in the Hall of Fame. He deserves that. Sure. Next one's Pavel Bure. I already read out the odds, but yep. he so hundred dollars. Yeah, hundred twenty bucks. So here's Pavel's card. Uh, left to right looks really close. Top to bottom does not. Oh, bummer. Yep. So close there though. Yep. And I'm showing you somebody else's card. When I spun it around, I picked up two. The back, you know, I think it's a 70-30 is, you know, if I remember right. I mean, I the back usually has so much leeway, I don't worry about it that much. And I look unless it's way, way off. Um, but that's Pavel's card. Again, not a 10. Okay. But, you know, a dollar fifty here, a dollar fifty there. Yeah. And uh, I've only lost a few bucks, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Do we have anybody else we're going to be looking forward to here? I mean, um... I guess we have Mark per person. 
No, okay. what's on? How about on the next page? Uh, next really guy. Oh, um, Peter number five thirty six. Five thirty six. Is it Ned Bed? Who is it? Let me see. Peter Bond. Bondra. Peter Bondra. Got Tim Sweeney. Peterson. Peterson Reichel. Bobby Holick. Mm -hmm. See, all these names are really familiar to me because I had to memorize everybody's name and then I, they had a, a four digit code that we had to memorize. So, Peter, whatever his last name is, his Bondra. recent price is $86. His average price is $62.82. And there are 17 tens currently in circulation. All right. So, we've got a uh, low number pop because. It's hockey, after all. Uh, left to right looks outstanding. Top to bottom looks like it is off a little mm -hmm. tiny bit. I mean, it's it's close, but it's probably a 60-40 instead of a 55-45. Okay. But um, put them up there. We'll, we'll scan it, and we'll see what happens. Cool. Dimitri Kristich. So this guy's number... Mm -hmm. Like was uh, when I was at Stella Magic yeah. was like two 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 two. I just remember I don't remember what his number was, but I remember it was one of those where it was something like that. One really. one 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 eight eight eight. Yeah, eight. yeah. Okay, so our next one's five forty five. Wayne Gritsky. He has a two thousand points card apparently, and that's going to be our last big hit. He is again. He's a uh, five forty five. That sounds like someone. I'm gonna go ahead and apologize for probably not putting these cards oh. back far enough. I was probably up here quite a bit, but um, you know, you guys probably weren't looking at the centering every single time. This guy right here, mm -hmm. on Com C, his card is um, selling for like six bucks. I, um, I'm not sure why, but he's had sales, recent sales. So, cool. and um, same with see. this Lemieux. So. Okay. Not not as high, but a couple bucks. That is our two thousand. All right. This guy goes for his recent price is forty eight dollars twelve cents. His average price is thirty seven dollars eighty five cents, and he has thirteen tens in circulation currently. All right, and you guys have already seen it's OC right, left to right is not good. Back Ooh. looks great. Top to bottom look good enough, but we were off on that. Okay. And then that's our last real big hit. And some of these, you know, are are good cards. If so, I'll go back through and, if, you know, uh, I mean, Brett Hull was was a star, right? And that is a centered card. So mm -hmm. maybe, although top to bottom looks a little like it might be off. So if we find some that, you know, these are old, these are Hall of Famers, and um, they haven't been graded, maybe we'll be the first mm -hmm. ones to grade them. Maybe. Whoa, big Whoa, earthquake. <laughs> Phone almost flew out on that. Yeah. Week. Well, I moved this thing down so much. All right. And then we've just got. got Zamboni? Is yeah. that a Zamboni? Yeah. This is actually. Yeah. It's a fun word to say. Yeah. And I, I I forget, but there's a really great story about Zamboni. So maybe it's on this card. Mm -hmm. So I'll let anybody read that. You can pause it. Hopefully you can make it out. Yeah. I think so. The. Um, I guess the other one here is the first Samboni on the left. Mm. Fun card. And then a checklist. And then we have in here also. We have the. The heroes. Which mm. to me are, I don't get why they need different. So what is the checklist. whole entire thing for this heroes? Why are they here? Is my well, this has been a thing going back. For, for quite a while, but mm -hmm. they reprint players that were really all time good. players. Yeah. Ooh. And maybe they played in a heroes game in this case. I'm not sure. Um, you know, I, every time you open these new packs and these cards that we have behind us and they throw in a, you know, a, a Barry Sanders in football or they throw in a, a Steve Carlton in, in baseball or I'm just randomly throwing out names. When I see them, that's who I collected as a kid, you know? Yeah. And, um, and I really enjoy seeing those cards, but, but they're, they're fun to see, mm -hmm. 
the side of me that says, oh, are they really valuable or collectible? I, I don't know. I mean, the whole idea that cards had value was really built on scarcity. And um, there's so many, all these new cards, all of us are taking them, sleeving them, storing them away, sending them someplace for storage or selling them right away. So they're like, the, because they're, we're treating, basically we're treating our cards too good. Mm -hmm. So it's making it so they're, they lose their value because they are too good. Which is why grading has value, right? So the people that can't stand grading, at least there's a way to determine supply and demand, right? And, and scarcity. So there are only 17 Peter Bondras that are PSA 10s in the world. There might be other 10s in other, like from other companies. Like what was the other one that the well, there's a bunch. tuxedo guys? Yeah, I can't remember. Could I start up my own grading company? Sure. Is there some sort of like... Someone's got to believe you can grade uh, well. There's no barrier to entry. I mean, there isn't like some registration or some like... Nope. I feel like there would be some test to allow you to be a certified grader, you know? There is no certified grader test. There should be. I think there should be like a rule between all the grading companies that they have to pass, that the graders have to pass a certain, some sort of a test before they're allowed to grade. Because that would make it so then all graders would have a certain standard. Right. Well, there's a lot of subjectivity to, to it, right? At least. And some of these companies have all come out with, um, you know, that they've computerized and they've done mm -hmm. things so that it's it's measuring it. And of course, now they're x-raying them. They're doing all these different things or, I mean, to look at them. I x-raying and, and more like, I don't know how to describe it. Yeah, yeah I don't know. You know, um, the I think the more grading, the better. I mm -hmm. I think as a, for grading companies, they run into, if they're too tough, no one wants to send them cards. And if they're too easy, no one wants to send them cards. So they you know, have to sort of get in between. If you're, if you're, I've, I've seen plenty of encased cards that said mm -hmm. tens, and they were so off center, I didn't have to look at anything else. You know, that's not a ten. You know, and and I, I think that's represented in the prices that these different grading companies get. Um, you know, we we sent some to CSG, which was um, they've done a lot of like collectibles and comics and stuff yep. in the past, and it was just to try them out and to see and uh we've yet to get any back from csg mm -hmm. um we'll do a do you know what we can do a show what we got it's your channel man you <laughs> get to do what you want to do um yeah so um yeah the great i think that the grading companies have a great place in, in the hobby yeah. and uh it makes it so that because there is such a massive amount of cards that are being produced today you can attach a value to them you know, you've got grading and then you have numbered cards, right? So and uh, that's what's going to create some level of scarcity. Yes. The, 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 the common card um, mm -hmm. is, is going to become just very common and not have the value. But those other things will. And then, of course, I think all the old cards that have scarcity. They're still, they're going to continue to get their value. I mean, I, it's crazy surprising how you can still get those old card boxes. Yeah. I mean... Well, the junk the junk box era is interesting, right? So, the you know the perception is there's a ton of cards and there's a lot of junk wax out there. Whether it's the quality, whether it's just the quantity, is is one thing. When you look at the population numbers, not for Michael Jordan cards, but just yeah. across the board, and compare them to the new cards today. A lot of the new cards' population numbers are through the roof. They're like junk wax era. And, and these are like, but yeah. they're not really junk wax. They're more like they're they're a lot of wax. We'll call them a lot, a lot, a lot of wax. <laughs> yeah. Right? Um, and everyone's grading because the, the printing quality, the, the ability for them to print today mm -hmm. and the center cards and do things is a lot easier. So the percentage of cards that come through that are great out of a box, okay, it's way better than the old boxes. Right. So I mean. Back there, those cards are going to hold their value. These cards, it's like, okay, it's worth $10 today. Tomorrow, it's worth $0.10, cents, sort of. Which ones are you Not, talking about? Uh, the new cards? Just the new, new cards, because every other day, it feels like they're getting a new box or something. Well, and there's 8 million variations and, you know, all that. But we do enjoy opening them so that people can see what they are. And, you know, if, if, uh, if we make a couple bucks, fun. <laughs> if we don't, fun. If we collect them because they're Hall of Famers, fun. 
right? We I don't think we got a ten today. I don't even think I'm not even sure we got a nine. I think we got a nine. We we I mean it might not have been like a perfect like a good card nine, but mm -hmm. I bet out open out of all those cards that we opened, we got a nine. Yeah. Well, and then we have the card of the guy who bought his own card, right, for two hundred fifty five dollars. So um, I don't know. Maybe it was. Jeff Bezos or someone that just bought one of the cards. He's a huge fan suite. of that guy. That's for sure. All right. So um, we've taken 35 minutes of your time. We're actually going to probably do another um, rip we here live shortly. Live stream one. Yep. We, we, may, live we may live stream one of these boxes back here. We may do a box battle. We don't know what we're doing. We're just going to gonna hang out and spend between, some time together. Between us, me and my dad. Yes. No, we're not going to go... Guess. And we're just going to battle. We're going to yeah. throw boxes at each other until somebody gives up. <laughs> yeah. would be, that would, I bet that would hurt some people's hearts if we actually did that. that just would. watching all the precious cards get destroyed. Yeah. Well, I'm Dad. I'm Chase. Yes. And uh, thanks for listening. Don't Thank forget to so subscribe. Much. Please. Please. All right. We're out. Bye.